So pray that you are sanitizing your hands and making sure that you are not only covering for yourself. People are like, I don't wear a mask. You're not wearing masks for yourself. You're wearing masks for others as well. So please put your mask on. Please keep your hands sanitized. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank God that he is a keeper of our soul. And he has kept us, hallelujah, from danger seen and unseen. And we are so thankful to him for his mighty acts and his mighty power. I want you to open with me the gospel according to St. John's. But as we do before we uh, move on, we also pray uh, that uh, people would give their life over to Jesus Christ. Um, it's so many things is happening right now, and it's a great opportunity, praise be to God, to allow Christ to be the center and core of your life. It's a great opportunity to operate in his peace and his love and his joy. Uh, I want to, uh, first of all, give an invitation to those who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I pray that you would open your hearts and your minds and your mouth and invite him in. I want to say this short prayer. And then we'll go into uh, further into the word. Uh, uh, praise God. Repeat after me, if you will. If you've never given your heart over to Jesus Christ, if you have a family member who's never given their heart over to Jesus Christ, if you have some neighbors, anyone that would, hallelujah, be availed, would avail themselves to give their life to Jesus, I want you to call them. I want you to, to encourage them. And I want you to repeat with them this sinner's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go a little slow, but please repeat after me. Your word says, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You want to look that up? That's found in John 6 and 37. So I know you wouldn't cast me out, but you take me in. And I thank you for it. So repeat after me. Lord, you said in your word, if thou shalt confess thy mouth with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead, that Jesus died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Praise be to God. That's Romans 10, 9 through 13. It says, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. I'm calling upon his name, the name of Jesus, so I know, Father, that you saved me now. Your word says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 10, I do believe with my heart, praise be to God, and I confess him as my Lord and Savior, and right now by faith, I'm saved, I'm saved. Thank God for salvation, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give God praise. We also pray for the peace of God to move mightily upon our hearts, and as we read the word of God, we pray that you would go get your Bibles and study and meditate on God's word. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, and observe to do all according that is written therein. It says, And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So you need to go back and study. You need to go back. I don't care who tells you what the Bible says. You need to go and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Well, first of all, you're saved. 
Number two, you are a believer, you go to God and in him, hallelujah, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will reveal his word to you. So it's not enough that you just hear somebody else tell you what thus said the Lord. You want to hear from the Father yourself. And he's your Father by virtue of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We can now call him Abba Father. Hallelujah. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we accept him as our Savior. Isn't that good news? Praise be to God. Let's open our Bibles to the Gospel according to St. John's. And you're going to have to write this down. You're going to have to read it and study it and spend some time, hallelujah, in the Word of God. It says in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 31, starting at the chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. It reads like this. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Look at verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, praise be to God, hallelujah, will draw all men unto me. So we honor the king and we thank God in the name of Jesus Christ for his death, burial, resurrection, because he was, in fact, lifted up on the cross. And he's drawing, all you have to do is receive him and accept him as your personal savior. Praise be to God. But in this verse, Jesus was referring to Satan as the prince of this world. Look, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Hallelujah. So he was talking about Satan as the prince of this world. And as he was preparing to go to the cross, as Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, he told his disciples that Satan, the prince of this world, would be cast out. Isn't that good news? Praise be to God. The Greek word for prince is akon, which denotes a ruler, one who rules. This same word, prince, is used in the word of God to refer to rulers of nations, judges, magistrates, members of the Sanhedrin, and rulers of the synagogue. As prince of this world, Satan is not in control of this world. Look at your neighbor, shake your neighbor, whatever you have to do and say, Satan is not in control of this world. Praise be to God. I know it looks bad. I know it looks tough. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Satan is not in control of this world. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It does not belong to him. This world does not belong to him. God has not given him the power and authority to exercise dominion over it. And as prince of this world, Satan does not have dominion and control over, watch this, the believer. Oh, you ought to shout on that one. Praise be to God. You ought to give God praise because we're addressing the believer and we're also addressing whosoever will. The Bible said, let him come. I pray that as you hear this message, if you're not a believer, you would give your life over to Jesus. There are some benefits, hallelujah, that's out of this world. But there are some benefits that's in this world. We like to talk about out of this world, but God wants to do something while we're here in the land of the living. It says, as he went to the cross, Jesus told his disciples, he says in John 12 and 31, he says, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The very moment Jesus rose from the dead, Satan was cast out. And this does not mean he was cast out of this world. Hmm? Or that he no longer is at, hallelujah, or working on the earth. What it does mean is that the power of Satan had over men has been broken. The power Satan had over men has been broken broken and no longer has he has no longer he no longer has control over men but all 
Those who believe, somebody shout, look at your neighbor and say, believe in Jesus, not Harry Christian, not Sun Young Moon, not Father Divine, Daddy Grace, but in Jesus Christ and accept him, you believe and accept him, are delivered out from under Satan's power and dominion of darkness and become part of the kingdom. Praise be to God. Oh God, that's found in Colossians 1 and 13. Now, as prince of this world, Satan is ruler and exercise power and dominion only over the unsaved. Satan is ruler and he can exercise power only mm, on the unsaved. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Are you saved today? If you're saved, Satan does not have rule or authority, does not have power over you. Praise be to God. Who Those who are in the world and the evil world system, he has organized. Satan is also referred to us as the God of this world and are as it is more accurately translated in the New Testament version. He's the God of this age. This term is used in no other way than simply to refer to Satan as the God of this worldly system. I'm taking my time because we, we don't like to talk about Satan. We don't like to talk about hell. We don't like to talk about the devil. And rightfully so when you have Christ Jesus. But we need to go and warn every man about what's about to take place and what's happening now. So Satan as the God of this world system and those who make him their God and those who once worshiped Baal are other idol gods. They are the children of the enemy. And as the prince of this world, Satan binds the mind of unbelievers and he takes them captive, praise be to God, at his will. They become part of his kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, and he exercises power and dominion over them. You could go to 2 Corinthians, we don't have time to go there, but 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Now in Ephesians chapter 2, go to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, praise be to God. We understand, praise be to God, the spiritual authority we have in Christ Jesus. Let's look at Ephesians 2 and 2, praise be to God, and see what God is speaking to our hearts. Hallelujah. And as we do so, we need to trust that with all the confusion that you hear and see and the things that are happening at such an awesome rate of time and there's confusion and there's fear and doubt, Praise be to God. We have no need to fear. Ephesians 2 and 2 says, Wherein, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of who? Disobedience. So as prince and power of the air, Satan is the ruler over the evil powers and principalities of darkness of this world. He is the prince of demons, which make up his kingdom in Matthews 12 and 12. Please go back and read it. And since he is not uh, omnipresent, praise be to God, he cannot be in more than one place at a time. Praise be to God. He works through the evil spirit under his command and through the children of disobedience. That's how he works. Those who are not followers of Jesus. He works through those who are not followers of Jesus. Today, Satan, as the prince of the power of the air, commissions evil spirits to oppress and torment God's people. He sends spirits of fear, hate, praise be to God, windy out here, lust, greed, Doubt, confusion, and a multitude of other attacks on you. It is against these evil powers and principalities that we must wrestle.
from day to day. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. God has given us power and authority over Satan and all his evil forces through the Holy Spirit, but we must recognize Satan as the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air and recognize these spirits before we can bind them and cast them out. Anybody in the house? Satan does not want you to see him as he really is. He wants you to forget about him, ignore him. Why? Because the time is short. He knows he has a, but a short time. We are living in the last days. He is not going to lose uh, or lose one opportunity to tear down and destroy, praise be to God, the church. In fact, we know he will intensify his attack, praise be to God, against God's people. Satan does not want to be exposed because he knows you have seen or been given power and authority. And his power and authority as we've been given is over him. So he does not want to be exposed. He does not want you to take your position as the powerful, mature, full equipped child of God that God has planned you to be. Praise be to God. Your position and strength will be in knowing and recognizing Satan, praise be to God, and his strategies. And knowing that you have the assurance of complete and lasting victory every day. Somebody shout every day of your life. Praise be to God. He's worthy to be praised. Let's go over to Corinthians chapter 10. Corinthians chapter 10. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. So we are, are, are standing on God's promises we are trusting and believing that God is speaking to our hearts simply because uh, so many people are operating in fear right now. And that fear does not come from God. Amen? Praise be to God. We, don't, we do not have to walk in fear. We do not have to walk in confusion. Hallelujah. He's worthy. God is almighty. He's all-knowing. And we stand on his promises. Amen? In 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, just be patient with me. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, hallelujah, chapter 10. I'm going to start at the uh, first verse. Hallelujah. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is present in his presence and based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. Number two, verse two. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Look at verse 3. This is what I want you to focus on. For though we walk in the flesh, huh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty do God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look at verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted their holly itself against the knowledge of God. I'll read that again. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of of Christ. I had to do that today. My wife and we had to do it. The equipment wasn't working. Nothing was happening because we had to pull down some strongholds. Praise be to God because when we begin to talk about the subject, hallelujah, that the Satan fears the most, hallelujah, he comes and he tries to attack. But we just say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Every high thing that exalts itself or try to exalt itself, we pull it down. Fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and a love and a sound mind. We're not operating in confusion. We're not walk, operating in doubt. Why? Because we know who we are in Christ. We know what we possess. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 10 and 3, one of the most vital key 
keys to success is spiritual in, in, in spiritual warfare is knowing how to locate your enemy. How to locate your enemy. Write that down. Hallelujah. Your real enemy. We will never solve the real problem if we do not first locate our real enemy. With the merit of teaching and conflicting doctrines, the enemy has God's people torn apart, confused, and running in different directions. As a result, we have lost sight of who and where our real enemy is. Saints are taking aim at each other and at causes, at denominations, at doctrines, at social issues. How about that? Politicians, drugs, crime, and on and on. But beloved, none of these things is the real problem. Remember, we will never solve the real problem until we locate our real enemy. And the reason why this is so important, the reason why uh, uh, Satan does not want us to teach this on today is because he knows that once we begin to know what God said about who we are and what we possess in Christ Jesus, all of this prejudice, all this black on black crime, all this black lives matter and white lives matter and, and, and all this hatred, praise be to God, if we would recognize who we are in Christ Jesus, and I'm talking to the believers. Now, the believers should be able to say amen to that. Now, I, I know people who are not saved, and when you start talking about God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, and you begin to teach and minister love, unconditional love, people have a problem that, about, uh, uh, about that. They want to take you back. But when they take me back to my past, I take them ahead to my future. And I let them know that my past was dealt with before my past. It was dealt with on Calvary. Jesus died for our sins. He died that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He died so we wouldn't go to hell and spend eternity in damnation. He died so we can have life and have it more abundantly. When? In the sweet by and by? Yes. But here also, somebody shout glory in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank God, hallelujah, that although we're in a battle and although we're fighting and although there's some challenges, praise be to God, we trust that we recognize the real enemy. One of the reasons for so many failures in our lives is because we have not zeroed in on the real enemy. We think it's a white man, we think it's a black man, or we think it's each other. And so we do all kinds of things that's not correct, praise God, that does not come from God. And then we try to make it get better by our talking and our conversation and our education and giving people some food and marching down the street, praise be to God. The world does that. The Bible says although we're in this world, we're not of this world, this world is not our home. And I'm not knocking those people if that's what they believe in and that's how they believe that's how they, their walk should be. Praise be to God. But I understand that there are some Christians and Christian means to be Christ-like. And as believers, we walk in the newness of life. We hold, we, 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 we grab hold to eternal life, which begins here, not when we die. So one of the reasons for so many thugs in our lives is because we have not zeroed in on the real enemy. We have gone into battle in all the wrong places, fighting individuals, fighting color, colors, uh, uh, nationalities, what side of town people come from. You know, all of these things, praise be to God, is Satan's tools to keep us defeated. Instead of the satanic forces behind them in Ephesians 6 and 12, you need to go there, praise be to God. As a result, many of the activity in ministries today, they become superficial, dealing only with the exterior, 
Praise be to God. The real enemy, the satanic forces, are allowed free reign in the spiritual realm while we wear ourselves out with useless, ineffective battle in the natural realm. The enemy is so mad at us today. You should see how we are recording. I, I pray that I'm praying that it would come out in the name of Jesus. But I, I want you to know he, he doesn't like this topic and we don't care that he does it. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Our warfare is not with our spouse, not with our child, our boss, our government. Praise be to God. Our government officials, although we need to pray for our government code, our son, we need to pray. Whether you want to admit it or not, these people are all precious creatures in God's eyes. Every last one of us. Praise be to God. I want you to get in your heart. There is invaluable potential for God in each one of us who will surrender to Christ. Anybody want to surrender to Christ? I'm telling you, Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer. Hmm. But they are being influenced and empowered by satanic forces when they are in rebellion against God. So the warfare is really against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians tells us to put on the whole arm of God. It is not against the people who, with their own free will, choose to yield themselves to rebellion. We cannot give up on them. We cannot dissipate our firepower by attacking them personally. Praise be to God. What we need to do is see with our spiritual eyes beneath the surface as Paul commands us in this commentary of scripture. We must therefore know no man after the flesh but with new eyes after the Spirit of God. Our main objective must be to get these people to lie down their arms and rebellion and surrender to Christ. After all, if we do not communicate to them how much God loves them and wants them, how will they ever know? To work the works of God by communicating his love, we must keep in mind that our warfare, praise God, is not with flesh and blood. We are not ruled by what we see on the surface. Our God who reigns has dominion over all of this. Now, I'm going to cut this part because we're having so much difficulty, but I also want to say that um, we're going to get back to this, and we're going to continue to talk about the victories that we have in Christ Jesus, and we could talk about who's behind all of this confusion and all of this death and all these problems. And we're praying that the believers would step to the plate. Uh, we're praying that the believers would stand up and be counted. All the we have it's so many people of different nationalities. We need you to speak up about who Christ is. Again, although we're in this world, we're not of this world, this world is not our home. So the people that are operating, hallelujah, in this world, that's what they believe, that's what they think, and we love them anyhow. But we also must tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. So we have the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. I have to stop because technology, the, the technical support is, is not happening like it should. And I pray that you have received what I have given so far. I might come back later on in the day. Praise God to continue. But I want you to pray and ask God to come into your heart if you're not saved. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you died on the cross. I accept you as my personal savior. I believe you're the soon coming king. Come into my heart. Because by faith, I'm saved. By faith, I believe in the Lord Jesus. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Satan has no authority over my life. 
He has no place in my life. I have the abundant life because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Father God, we just thank you for these individuals. We thank you for this time. We pray to come back shortly. In Jesus' name, amen. When I looked at it, it was...